As soon as it turn on, people go crazy. It's an energy to it, you know? It's more than just a beat and a song. It just feel like a nigga just getting off. Y'all have to show the clip of him performing this because this shit is too epic. <laughs> So I can fuck the world for 72 hours Goddamn, I feel amazing Damn, I'm in the matrix My mind is living on cloud nine And this nine is never on vacation Being from Cali, like, I really felt like I knew this person I felt like damn near like it was me Good Kid, Mad City remind me of just like being in Pasadena, being in Altadena And just like the different types of people Like family members, going to church I had to be for a minute. I did a session with my homeboy Sounds, and he got a relationship with Sierra, and we went to the studio, she cut it, and the, uh, the name of the song was Hit Boy. So I was dumb, hype. The situation fell apart, I don't know how. So like, I low-key was like disappointed. You know, that's for every producer. Like, don't get discouraged because like, this became like a much more legendary track than it would have been. The first sound I ended up using, like which inspired pretty much the whole beat was um, this loop I found. So what I did was just the way it cut through is like kind of gritty. You can't avoid or ignore that sound. I just built that breakup. Like I I didn't even like start on the beach yet. Like I just was still stuck on like trying to find something to make that tie in. So like I used like four individual sounds and made my own break. I found this kick right here. I found this kick right here that went along with it. So when you put that in, you get. And after that, I needed a snare, like some type of top end on that break. So from there, I found a guitar head. It was, you know, feeling like some old school Dre, Easy E type shit. People really got to give Dre his credit. Like he was going crazy with the break beats. Well, I'm peeping and I'm creeping and I'm creeping, but I damn they got caught because my people kept peeping. Now it's time. When you put it all together, it's like. Now it's time to start building the beat. I ended up finding this crazy, dirty sounding bell. Then from there, I found an 808. EQ'd it a little bit, put a kick like pump on it, normalized it. Definitely needed a snare. This part was like Timbaland-ish, you know what I'm saying? So just finding something that was reminiscent of just the energy that he would bring on his beats. Damn, there sound like some old school Timbo shit. Then what I did was layered it with another clap snare type sound just to give it a different texture. So when you put them together, it's... By the time I got to this point in the beat, like I was just flowing, I was just gelling. So I was going through sounds and anything that I felt like added, you know, an extra something to the beat, I added it. So I ended up finding this right here. I found another uh, sound for this turnaround, this break. And it's kind of like some industrial, like just heavy sound and shit. This sound right here, just like to give it a little more energy on the turnaround. The scratch is hard too though. I just like played it off of the snare. And after I added that, I just felt like, yeah, this is this, done, it's ready. That's what it came out to be. Kendrick came through my crib, actually. I was living in Tarzana at the time. I think it was him and Dave Free. Took the beat, and I remember him texting me like, yo, we got one. The energy, the way he flipped it, and you know, just made it feel like he was really just spitting like with the homies in the backseat, for real. When I heard the line, like him say, killing everything for push to a motherfucking hit boy beat, that shit was crazy. Him shouting me out and liking the beat so much that he wanted to say something about me, like, you know what I'm saying? That mean a lot. He's just a person who is forward thinking, so he always gonna elevate, and I'm excited to see what's next for him, for real. I wrote that song in, in, in the perspective of being 16 years old. 
I knew who Martin Luther King was then, but being 16, the dream we stood for was money, power, you know, sex, drugs, murder, and things like that. So now that I, I grew older, you know, I matured a lot more. You know, I understand what he really represented, you know, peace and, and, and unity and love and, and prosperity. And um, you can hear that in my music now. I'm a fan of him and he was a fan of me. So we just, you know, trading ideas. And this was one that so happened to fit in his world at the time. And that's like, that's the beautiful thing about production. Like, you know, sometimes you might have a beat and you like, man, it's for show for this person. And it's like, that person don't even like it. It might go to a whole different person. It might work out even better.